Hashtag America did you know hashtag history lessons my teacher never taught me in school, thoughtful face, hashtag free states first slave states. The daring disguise that helped one enslaved couple escape to freedom. In 1848 William and Ellen Craft blurred the lines of race and gender in order to escape slavery. Mary Evans Picture Library slash Everett Collection, in the mid-19th century in Macon, Georgia, a man and woman fell in love, married and, as many young couples do, began thinking about starting a family. But Ellen and William Craft were both enslaved and were well aware that any of their future children could be ripped away at any moment and sold as property. So, they devised a bold escape plan. Ellen would travel from Macon, Georgia to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania by train, masquerading as a white man and slaveholder. Her husband, William, would pose as her enslaved valet. It was a risky idea, but their background had prepared them for the moment. Both faced separation from family and childhood. Ellen was born in 1826, the illegitimate biracial daughter of a slaveholder and a woman enslaved to him, in Clinton, Georgia. Her fair skin and facial features so strongly resembled her father that she was often mistaken as a member of the family, which frustrated the slaveholder's wife. In response, the wife gave Ellen to her daughter, Ellen's half-sister, in Macon. William is thought to be born around rural Georgia in 1824. In order for his slaveholder to repay his debts, 16-year-old William, his brother, sister and parents, were torn apart and sold to different slaveholders, with William ending up in Macon. It was in this southern town that William and Ellen met and later wed, although the specifics remain unknown. What is known is that the pair was determined to have children and live as a free family. Because Ellen shared many resemblances with her father, they decided she could pull off a disguise as a white man. In fact, the idea wasn't completely novel. Using disguise to escape, there were other stories of mixed-race enslaved people, enslaved people who looked white, who passed for white, there were also other cases of enslaved people disguising themselves in the opposite gender. When it came to escaping the bonds of slavery, black people, she says, got very creative. William worked as a carpenter under his slaveholder, and the majority of his earnings were taken by his owner. But he managed to save enough to finance his and Ellen's escape. Ellen was a house servant to her half-sister, where she worked as a seamstress, among other domestic duties. With her skills, she was able to stitch her disguise. Neither William nor Ellen could read or write, since it was forbidden for enslaved people to study. In order to hide her illiteracy, Ellen placed her arm in a sling to avoid drawing attention to herself if any signatures were required along the way. She also covered her face in bandages to hide her feminine features. Both William and Ellen concoct the story that she is very ill. And she's suffering from some kind of, tooth problem, along with arthritis, at that time, middle of the 19th century, Philadelphia was a medical center in the United States. It was renowned for its hospitals, its spas, its cutting-edge medical practices. It was a convenient cover-up, a southern white slaveholder, riddled with injuries traveling with his enslaved worker to help him on the journey for medical treatment. The mouth injury was also used as an alibi for hiding her voice and possibly talking to anyone and raising flags that she wasn't who she appeared to be, Mary Evans Picture Library slash Everett Collection. Ellen Craft depicted in the clothes she wore for her escape disguised as a man. You have a very attentive boy, sir, but you had better watch him like a hawk when you get on to the north, said a passenger to Ellen on their trip to Charleston, according to William Craft's book Running a Thousand Miles for Freedom, or, The Escape of William and Ellen Craft from Slavery. He seems all very well here, but he may act quite differently there. I know several gentlemen who have lost their valuable Negroes among them damned cutthroat abolitionists. William was also covertly advised by abolitionists to flee as soon as his feet touched free soil. William and Ellen traveled from Charleston via steamer and train to Wilmington, North Carolina and Baltimore, Maryland, among other cities, before finally reaching their destination, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on Christmas Day in 1848. Hashtag things that make you question everything.